Guys, we did it. It's your boy Geese, Kamish Geese, for the week five recap. I bet you didn't think you'd see me here. I didn't think I'd be here. I thought I was done till playoff time. But hey, when a brother loses by one yard, you gotta step in. You gotta step in as the commissioner and relieve him and relieve him of his recap duties. Lights are out. The power's out here on Tohi Drive, but I'm gonna persevere and still deliver this recap nonetheless. So let's get on with it. For my first segment, I'm going to picture what it would be like to be the coordinator at ESPN, the video coordinator, uh, for bringing in sideline reporters. So let's see how it is. I'm calling it Sideline Situations. Uh, let's just give this a shot. First, let's bring in a Sal Palantonio from Philadelphia. Good morning, and Sal. The timing of this decision, a curious one, is the Eagles still have one more game left on the schedule with the Giants, and Lurie's not the type of owner to make a rash decision. Why do it last night? Kevin, I think they just want me. Yeah, I don't Sal, I get it. You've been all you've been on the phone. You've been doing interviews uh, over the last twelve hours addressing the Eagles situation. So we do understand. No, we don't understand. God, this is hard work. Uh, let's bring in Justina Anderson. Come on in here. You know, Lions trying to play their best without running back Javid Best after not having the best uh, year of his career. Now, meanwhile, Maurice Morris is likely to get the start. Um, Maurice Morris is likely to get the start, though, after running, or excuse me, after having a 100-yard rushing game and replacing Best last year. Now, as for the Atlanta Falcons, wide receiver Julio Jones is expected to still be out there, possibly, um, excuse me, uh, wide receiver Julio Jones is still listed as doubtful after, okay, uh, hey, Josina, uh, Roddy Wright says that, yes, Josina, Josina, Josina. Yeah, you're fired. Uh, Doris, we only have Doris Burke. Guys, can I, yeah, Doris Burke, we're going to you. Jason Kidd told us this morning after shoot-around that as an opponent, this arena is as loud and as good as it gets in the NBA. Several other guys have told me that this, as close as any arena in the NBA to, sorry about that, three, two, Stuart Jason Kidd saying this morning after shoot around that as an opponent, this arena is as loud and as good as it gets in the NBA. Several other players say. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, three, two, one, you're fired. Um, okay, we have no one else to do. What do we. Wait a second. Could this work? Can I, can I pull up Brendan Byrne? Let, let's go to Brendan Byrne. You know, before this week, I thought I had one of the easiest victories of all time. I played Dean, who has who has assembled one of the worst damn lineups I've ever seen. Cody Kessler as his QB1. But you know what? You know what? My team just played like crap on Sunday. But it, it really didn't matter because you know what? Dean is a shit team, right? No! Sammy Coates goes off for 27. All right? With that being said, though, with that being said, he only points up 108, 109. I don't, I don't, I don't care. All right, so I'm projected to lose by two points, even with my team playing like pure crap. Start projecting about the last second, gets me zero. Goose egg. Thanks a lot. All right. Monday morning, I'm feeling good. I feel like I have the best duo in the league, Jamison Evans. They can do it. They're clutch. I can put this in the back. All right. I don't want to drop to two and three. Losers go two and three. Consolation guys go two and three. Not me. I'm a winner. School passes finally. Worst day ever. Nerve wracking in the head. Guess what? Guess what? Jameis, w once the game comes on, Jameis and Evans, they combined for six points in the first half. Six points. Jameis had one point in the first quarter. No momentum going my way at all. None whatsoever. I'm panicking. I'm panicking in the mind. This, this fat ass camera was FaceTiming the whole time trying to give me some, some sympathy. All right? But at the end of the game, you'll see what happens. This guy turns on me. Third, second half commences. Second half commences, all right? Here's what happens. Jameis throws a beautiful ball to Mike Evans in the end zone. This is what happens right here. Beautiful move. Start a step. Bam, he's gone. 
27 yard touchdown. Bam, that's like 50 points right there. I'm back in the game, baby. James scores two point conversion. I'm down by four. Four damn points. I can do it, right? He only has Fozzie Whitaker. Who, what kind of name is that? Fozzie? He ain't shit. But guess, but just guess what, all right? Winston isn't as close as I thought. First of all, Fozzie, Fozzie gets, gets 40 yards in that game. I don't know how the hell he got it. Anything else got on the end zone. Thank God he didn't. Only look that came, out, that came my way on Monday night. But guess what? The whole fourth quarter, the Bucks try to run around the clock. They give Jaquiz Rogers 35 touches. That man is from the streets. He does not deserve to be on a football team. He sucks. He trash. I'm ever so hated from last, from last night. Like, I, I just can't even process what happened in my mind, bro. It was, it was a nightmare. A freaking nightmare, y'all. <sighs> Jameis. Jameis. Uh, Jameis Winston. With five minutes to go. He's shredding. He's shredding the field. He's shredding the field, all right? He's shredding. I'm only down by four, all right? So he puts it down to one point within like two minutes, all right? This dumbass coach doesn't want to win. Dirk Cutter does not want to win the damn game. So you know what? He calls timeouts because he's scared. He's a little bitch. Panthers, Panthers don't believe in them too. They call timeouts. But guess what? It was Winston who carried the ball down the field in that last final drive. Two Evans, bam, I'm only down by one. You guys don't realize I'm down by one point. I need one more yard. But once I get down to the 40, guess what? 30, 30 seconds left. Drop, drop play to Quiz Rogers. Drop play. This is James right here. Shotgun, drop play. Ah, my heart sank. My damn heart, it sank. Are you kidding me? That might be the last final play of the game. But on top of that, on top of that, face mask, 15 yards. Oh my God, at that point, I knew I lost. Murphy's Law, look it up. It's gonna happen to me. I've experienced the two worst devastating losses in Monday Night History. One to Lucas Laughter. Look it up. And of course, of course, of course, Robert Aguayo, one of the worst kids I've ever seen in the NFL, hits it right down the middle to end the game. Would have been OT, I would have won. Whatever though, it's in, them, in my past two and three, whatever. Now this is the week five recap. Pretty good tie-in, I think. Pretty good transition to the Week 5 recap by me. Probably probably hand-in-hand -hand with stat correction, but uh, I really like the new pattern, you know, like a SNL cold open type thing. Uh, Brennan killed it. Sal Palantonio killed it. Great, tran great transition idea by me. Thanks, Brennan, for coming through. A lot of material there as you lost by one yard. Yes, let's go to that matchup first. We got it. We have to get it over with, Brennan. Okay? I have no other choice. Dean Favetti versus Brent Sanity. Kill us. Dean's high score. You here. Can you hear me right? It is Sammy Coates, everybody. Sammy Coates. Brent's is Andrew Luck. That's 29. We already know. Jameis Winston, 219 yards. Mike Evans, 89 yards. One more yard ties it. One more yard from each of them. He's got himself a W. But we do have a little video surprise. No one knows about this. But uh, right after I watched that tragic loss, I went and delivered a little something to Brendan. Enjoy. Uh, I'm the best darn commissioner you've ever seen. Because I uh, went to Jersey Mike's, saw Brendan lose by one yard. I watched the entire game. Watched the entire fourth quarter in Jersey Mike's. Picked him up a sugar cookie because he just needs to be cheered up. He just does. I'm the best commissioner in the world. Hey, Brendan. Got you a cookie. You good? You good? No, I'm not good. That was rough. Now I'm gonna follow two and four, and now I'm gonna be out of the playoffs. You're two and. Well, I'm going to be 2-4, because Evans and Winston are on a bye, and McKenzie's on a bye as well. Don't want a bye to get to you. Do you know how many buys Dean had in the injuries? I, I could have started, started so many things. Looking at Fantasy like, Cast is not going to help. You, you just got to get no, over this no. and look on to next week. Seriously. I haven't even done my homework. I got camp for you, dude. Dirk Cutter, Dirk Coder. 
<laughs> Bucks coach. He ran it for Jameis for like 36 times. Stop. Just such a rough loss for Brendan. And congratulations to Dean. Don't want to take anything away from that victory. I guess you deserve it. That lineup was... Eh. But, uh, yeah, sorry, Brandon. That was probably... I'm going to say this. Commissioner rules. That was the most devastating loss in ACS FFL history. Let's get on with the recap. In other news, your commissioner lost again. 155 to 91. That's embarrassing. Eli Wolf, congratulations. Let me get a quick check. Yeah, oh, second high score. Side note, congrats, Diego. A lot of high scoring. A lot of low scoring. Eli, congrats, your team's legit. Io Bender vs. Bartok, another whooping. Phillip Rivers put up 37, that's pretty good. 149 to 98 there. Dean Favetti vs. Brendan, skip. Mini Geese vs. A Ben Davidorf, who's going to lose next week to me. 151 to 110, Ben goes down. Mini Geese, best record in the league, 4 1, emerge right there. Blake Fisher vs. Cy, 133, 108, nothing there. Cameron versus Diego. Diego with the high scorer of the week. Congratulations, big dog. 158 to 118. Not too many glamorous matchups because I think we all put of our we all put our marquee matchup esque type matchups and scores into one game, one game only. Dean versus Brennan. It will be remembered forever. One last quick thing for me to leave you guys with. They're going to cut me off the air in like 15 seconds. This is a preview of me driving off into the ACS FFL playoff bound promised land. Here it is. Take a look. Stocks through the roof. I heard you fuck them with this guy. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% play.